Let's turn our attention now to health. The woman in charge of the ministry, Senator Ann Peters, says they are excited about 2010, having laid the foundation in 2009 with the assistance of former Health Minister Carl Hood, who was assigned to the Ministry of Labor in the August cabinet reshuffle. Of critical importance in 2010 are plans for the implementation of fees at the General Hospital and other health facilities to help fund the cost of health care in Grenada. Already you have fees that have been there on the books for ages and even if they're old and we realize in some cases almost nonsensical there is still a need for us to collect whatever we can collect i think off the back of my head and i stand to be corrected even with the scarcity of of the process now for collecting we may have collect after a long time something like about six million dollars in, in user fees yeah now we feel very strongly that if we put in place the system to allow for a better process of collecting user fees that the country will benefit. I'll tell you why. For example, sometimes you have visitors from outside of the country who would come into the facility for service. And based on what they, they know or the expectations, they come and they're prepared to pay. But after X o'clock, because there is no financial officer available, staff is not authorized to collect fees. What do you say to a person like that? They walk away and they do not pay. And there are quite a number of persons who are willing to pay, but the systems are not there. So what we're aiming to do um, for 2010, already we have had um, some of the officers given to us from the, uh, the, the public service. We are now going to put in place a, a billing and admissions unit um, so people will be processed properly and that you know user fees will be collected properly and efficiently. And we feel very strongly that with, with, with even the limitation in the, in the fee schedule itself, that there is, there is strong possibility that we could be able to collect fees. Because I'll tell you, the government purchased drugs from um, the pool procurement services that's in St. Lucia. And fortunately or unfortunately, this government, we inherited some serious debt to the PPS. We would need now, and even if you keep paying, we have had, we have had inherited debt from since 2007. Um, and even if as a ministry you pay some, you, you're always in the red. <laughs> hmm. So already starting 2010, we will need approximately $3 million to knock off the debt to PPS to allow us to really access services at the speed at which we would want it, the drugs and so on. And as I said, with the rising cost of supplies, we have to really get on board. So yes, we are going to be putting in place the mechanisms of collecting user fees. And I don't think there's going to be much resistance because people voluntarily ask, well, how much do I pay? A major challenge for the ministry was the emergence of H1N1, which killed more than 6,500 people worldwide in 2009. The symptoms of H1N1 in people include fever, cough, sore throat, runny or stuffy nose, body aches, headache, chills and fatigue. Minister Peters says H1N1 taught some valuable lessons and ironically came at a good time because it gave them the opportunity as a ministry to see where the loopholes were. But H1N1 gave us an opportunity to have that internal um, analysis done to look at where we were and how prepared we were. We recognized, for example, that we needed to strengthen the whole issue of poor health the port, what was happening on our ports, not just for H1N1, but for everything else. Um, and we are now working closer, much closer, with the Port Authority, with people in the tourism sector, with marine owners and so on. You know, pe people are coming forward to say to us, we now want our marina to, to have um, the ability to clear, you know, with us. So how can we partner with you to make sure we have a port health nurse and the inspector and everybody's there and you know that came out of H1N1 and we're very very happy for that collaboration again because in health we see the whole concept of public private partnership enhancing the quality of what we're able to deliver. So um, in addition to that it helped us to sharpen our skills in terms of how you handle communicable diseases etc etc but I think one of the critical things that came out is that in the health sector you will always have to have in the back of your mind what I would call miscellaneous amounts in your budget <laughs> to allow for you to take care of these unforeseen communicable diseases that raise their heads every now and again and you have no control over them. The emergence of H1N1 prompted the ministry to table for review the Public Health Act, which the minister says is an outdated piece of legislation. So within the health sector, we have a lot of outdated laws 
you know i was i was amazed for example when i saw um in the mental health act in the mental health regulations um reference to lunatics uh, and imbecile i mean <laughs> these are laws on the books dating from since 1940 whenever i don't know yeah. fortunately we now have um a complete draft piece of legislation on mental health which by the grace of god has eliminated all this kind of language and is basically on, on board now with what I would call a, a modern day approach to how we look at mental health. And mental health is going to be part of our 2010 agenda. We have reestablished um, our contact with Dalhousie University from out of Canada. Only yesterday I got a note that one of the consultants intend to speak with me later in the week so that we can follow through on their return to Grenada to begin, well, to start another process then of addressing mental health, i.e. community services, how we deal with community mental health, um, training for staff. We now have a psychiatrist, full-time psychiatrist at our hospital. She's a Cuban national, but speaks English fluently. She has um, Jamaican parenting background and so on, and understands the, the, the culture of the Caribbean. So we're looking at how best we can enhance the skills and the capacities of our own staff within the sector. Um, we realize that there is need to broaden the base of the sector. So mental health is going to be one of the pivotal ones we're going to be looking at in conjunction with the legislation. As I said before, we're looking at the Port Health, um, the Port Health Act, the Public Health Act, I'm sorry, the Public Health Act. The Hospital Act is another one that we have to look at because um, there was some discussion about a hospital authority. I don't think that was finally um, gazetted as such. We have to look at that. Um, and even with the legislation that we operate with now, it's antiquated. It's you know you still talk about um, the private block and, and Duncan's ward, and these things are no longer there. Um, uh, you have certain positions that are no longer there. We no longer have medical superintendent. We now have director of hospital services. So in other words, there has been changes in nomenclature and all of that. But then we need to look at um, whether these things are really legal, you know, in law. The various levels of assistance programs that existed during the last administration, for example, medication and medical assistance, have now been consolidated to lend to proper monitoring and evaluation. To support this initiative, a medical social worker was appointed and operates from within the Ministry of Health. The minister says they also want to revisit the concept of community health so as to ease the burden on hospital services. With all that has been done, she's confident that, with her team, the ministry will make significant strides in the coming year. Plans are already in train to strengthen the administrative capacity of the ministry. We are looking now at um, reinforcing the private hospitals and um, um, homes uh, act. There is an act and that has been left un unattended. We have been looking at legislation and uh, we've been able, for example, to get the, um, the final draft, if you want to call it that, of the Mental Health Act, because this is something that really needs looking into. Um, we now have on the table the, re we, uh, the report from the National Health Insurance Committee, because we had started that during um, Minister Hood's uh, stint, and we've now at the point where we're ready to get the report from the committee so we could lay that before the parliament and really begin some, before the cabinet, sorry, and really begin some serious work on looking at the whole issue of national health insurance. And I think that we've been able, um, since August of, of this year, to have at Princess Alice Hospital, and that for me, is a major achievement. Um, we now have four doctors there, and we now have an obstetrician gynecologist, and um, doc, uh, our chief medical officer was working with the pediatric department, so we can have a pediatrician who would go out there also to provide services. So it is the beginning of the vision of the ministry and the government to have more of those services available in all of our major health um, facilities in the communities. So apart from the subsidiary hospitals, we are hoping 2010, good visioning, that as part of our whole primary health care restructuring that we will have within the major facilities, Grand Bra, Tivoli, um, Grand Dance, Sotez, um, St. John, St. Mark, uh, the facilities available at those levels because we think it is important to bring the service out. Um, that has a twofold um, benefit. One, it saves people time and monies to come into St. George's for everything, and two, it eases up the congestion in our already stretched general hospital facilities.